Hi, and welcome to Mobs Video Trainings. Today I will be talking about the Microsoft Link Server 23, uh, 2013 planning tool. Uh, I've already installed it in my machine. Uh, let's have there. Over here, it's the planning tool. Before doing that, uh, we will need to um, get on to our understanding with the server server roles, standard, uh, primarily front end pools, uh, mediation server, director, persistent chat, and stores and things like that. Uh, I believe that you guys can go through with these things. Here is the link and also the download link for the planning tool is here and there are there are some uh, video trainings also available from Microsoft TechNet that you should go on through all of these things, all of these jumpstart disaster recovery configuring the basic enterprise voice uh, with the media gateway uh, preferably audio codes and dialogic and net products these things uh, comes in uh, with very handy and very easy to configure voice uh, architectures and things like that. Basically, it would be enterprise voice. So uh, I will be focusing on with the deployment planning tool. This is all uh, I have configured already. So let's go ahead with the site topology, the global topology. This has already been made. As you can see, this is my primary site. These are my global, uh, sorry, these are the branch sites site one, site two, site three, and these are the DR sites, and as well as the replication server. As you can see on the right side, it actually shows uh, what, are actually, what are the things actually needed uh, to publish this topology. So let's start with a new one. Sorry for the noise. Let's get started. Audio video conferencing. We'd like to enable audio and video conferencing for your organization. That would be yes. Click next. Dial in conferencing. People uh, who are roaming uh, would be able to dial in with your uh, link server. Absolutely a yes. Web conferencing, definitely yes. Enterprise voice, this would enable your PSTN to link and vice versa, call forwardings and uh, things like that. Exchange unified messaging, actually there is no way that uh, the things, uh, th things are like uh, Exchange unified messaging uh, without the UM service of Exchange link, uh, it's just an IMN presence and conferencing server. So you won't get the total experience of it. The call administration control, yes. Uh, monitoring, definitely, a yes. Archiving, deploy ex archiving as skill set, database server as an archiving storage. Persistent chat, yes. It will be multiple, a multiple, uh, multi-party would be uh, having chat on the same pane. Mobility, absolutely a yes. Federation, I want to enable OCS also. And either way, for uh, providers federation through SIP, SIP trunks. And also with the XMPP services. High availability, a yes. IP support both for IPv4 and IPv6. Disaster recovery, yes. Features overview completed. Let's design the sites. I'll be uh, uh, have a look at these things since it's a it's going to be a small video only for how to do this. And later on, you will be able to publish this site as a link server. So let's focus on the Exchange uh, archiving integration and Windows 15. Sorry, uh, Exchange mailbox servers would also be integrated. Site name would be similar. Mobs. 
slash bd.org site home users let's design it for 5000 users cloud home users let's say uh, 1000 click on next zip domain normally we design zip like uh, mobs dash bd.org add click next uh, meeting concurrent concurrent meeting calls about uh, five percent of the five thousand. That's nearly about two fifty. Uh, we create fifteen percent for the dial in conferencing, and I am only conference have no the I am only would be. Let's uh, move it up a bit. Ten percent. Let's say forty percent of the people would need would not actually need the PSTN connectivity. Media mix for web conferences, video, audio, audio, and video capable. And collaboration is actually enabled. So you can share files, share presentations, uh, chalk talk, and things like that. Uh, enabled users for the enterprise voice, 60%. What percentage of cloud home users will be enabled for hybrid voice? Uh, cloud enabled home users would be, let's say, 5%. External phone traffic, maximum four calls per hour. That's good enough. Uh, media bypass for 60, 65%. Types of call, uh, PSTN call, everyone should be enabled for this. But you have to understand that you have to get enterprise licensing for link as well. Uh, the voice uh, plus scale. Response group, 0.15%. Uh, call parking would be 0.05. I have existing voice infrastructure with a PBX deployed. If you have a PBX installed already and it, if it supports uh, SIP trunking or uh, E1 or T1 line from your PSTN company, you should go for this one. And if you want to have a SIP trunk or if you want to have uh, uh, want to deploy a gateway like I, I have um, earlier told you, like um, audio codes or dialogic gateways. So you can have it configured, it's like that. So I'm planning on having a gateway for the system. So it will be a T1 or E1 connections. Here I'm actually choosing E1. And the gateways I'm choosing for four ports, you, can, you could have uh, uh, up to 16 ports, that's huge and massive. Enable exchange UM services for all users, and they will be checking voicemails like this is the 4 or 8. Uh, so let's select the minimum. External user access. Yes, I want to deploy edge server in my payment. It always has a uh, advantage for uh, deploying an edge. It works as a uh, pass-through proxy, uh, you can say. Hardware load balancer with pipe, uh, public IP addresses, definitely a good choice. And I would also want to have a director in my site. Um, since I will be having, um, I will be adding more and more branches, so a director is a good choice. Click next, persistent chat. Persistent chat would be 20% of the 5,000 users. It's good enough. Enabled users for client settings, 40% for the mobility, and 50% for the web access. That's link LWA, stands for link web access. Link web access should, everyone should have link web access. So collocation options, deploy standalone or collocate, uh, collocate my mediation servers. That means the mediation service would be collocated in the front end servers. So click next, brand site name. First site is, uh, let's do it, site one, zero one. Number of users would be 20, has a resident one connection, media bypass available. Click on number two. Second side would have 10 users, media bypass available. Third branch would be having five users without the bypass. So 
Let's see how things comes up. Add on the central site. No. The web planning tool finished successfully. Let's draw the image. You see it's similar to the one I've shown you. Uh, let's double click on it on the primary server. You'll see your whole thing. Reverse proxy, edge servers, external user connectivity, PSTN connectivity through Media Gateway. That's your Media Gateway. And that's your UC endpoints, directors, Active Directory integration with Office applications, web app. Uh, web app gives you um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and things like that for accessing uh, from the web. Exchange mailbox server, that's the total ser uh, your primary mailbox server, MBX server, and your UM server that would actually integrate it with the Active Directory and as well the link front end pools. And these are the persistent chat servers. So imagine that everyone, everything that I'm actually selecting, it has a massive uh, internet capability ports that need, you need to open and things like that. That's the edge network diagram. Let's go back to this site topology again. Front end servers, there are nothing to be specific actually. And again, over here, your perimeter network, internet firewall, internal firewall, an edge VLAN, and your consolidated VLAN is all actually shown here. So how the authentication could, could be get passed. Your HLB is over here, hardware load balancers. And also over here, you get the SIP trunks, SIP trunks, as you can see, these are the primary SIP trunks. And this is the corporate network also with the SIP transmissions and edge admin reports, certificate reports, firewall reports, what you need to do, uh, source and destination ports that needs to be opened, 443. These are always uh, seriously important for the roles. Please go, go through with these uh, numbers. DNS reports also. Certificate is a very um, needed item over here and it doesn't go through without the certificate services. So as you can see, the directory services, directory pools and everything, reverse proxy, it's already gave you a name but it doesn't mean that you have to go through with this. You can definitely change at any point of time. So the capacity settings, the whole thing at a glance is over here. And also external links are also over here. Server user models are also located in the system. You can go ahead with those things also. So let's go for the site topology. UM service, as you can see, there's nothing actually there. Uh, these are the endpoints, front end pools. These are your edge server, port requirements, DNS, load balancer, and your hardware load balancer. So as you can see, you can click on any any one of it. Uh, you can add uh, other things also. As you can see, whenever you click on it, it changes. So that's it, folks, for today. Hopefully, I'll be... Uh, creating some more videos on this in this regard and have it posted thank you for listening bye